Okay, so a green lease is the inclusion of energy and environmental performance clauses in a lease to allow more effective collaboration between landlords and tenants. Uh, the relevance to Asia, um, despite the increase in sort of new building construction that we're seeing in Asia compared to some of the other markets, um, a lot of building stock predates energy efficiency and environmental performance requirements. So green leases are effectively an enabler where you can get buildings that weren't designed for high sustainability performance to achieve um, better performance outcomes. One of the key ways in which green leases can help catalyse the green building industry in Asia is through disclosure. So one of the key parts of a green lease is typically around sharing of information. So that's a way that you can be more transparent around things like energy performance, green building certification. Um, by sharing that data, creating a market for green building, sustainable buildings, is one of the ways we can quickly increase the uptake of green buildings and green leases in Asia. The first part, I would say yes and no. So a lot of sustainability practices are now just business as usual. So it's good housekeeping, um, good performance. Um, so we're seeing facility managers, leasing managers, it's just what they do as part of every day. Um, some green building, particularly if you're going for higher green building certification, so LEED Platinum, for example, or Greenmark, the higher ratings, it does actually in increase the capital cost of the construction as well as the certification costs. Um, so often that can flow through to a higher rent. What we do see though is that higher rent is more than offset by productivity gains. So more um, productive, more, more engaged and happier staff generally outweigh the, in any increase in rent. Probably the main setback is um, People just wanting to reduce everything to pure financial terms. Um, as, a, as I was saying earlier, it's not always possible. We're starting to build and being able to quantify benefits such as the sort of productivity and well-being and engagement benefits of being in a green or sustainable building. So I guess there's a couple of ways I cope with it. Um, I recognise that a, a key part of my role is educating, so working with people who might be adverse to green whether it's a green building or, or, or green lease. So recognising that some of this change does take time, um, sharing what information I do have, and working for a global company like JLL, we've got case studies and, and sort of best practice that we can draw on from around the world. The best case studies, one of the best local examples is CDL, so one of the big landlords here in Singapore. Uh, they picked up a building and construction authority award um, for their green, la green lease work that they've been doing. Um, they they recognise the benefits of engaging with tenants on a range of sustainability topics, not just energy. So um, most recently we received an update um, where in one of their buildings um, encouraging us to participate in a number of sustainability initiatives and they, they're really um, quite good at sharing information across the board, not just from a, um, how we can improve the office environment, but also things that the staff can take home and improve their um, residential um, space as well.